So here at the Chantilly Arts and Elegance and on display here is the Volkswagen Group's Gen Travel and to talk me through it, Klaus, you are the head of design for the Volkswagen Group. Maybe you can explain what this really futuristic car is and how you've arrived at it looking the way it looks. Yeah, you know, uh, our idea is to give a glimpse into the future that is a bit further away. So beyond uh, 28, 29, 30. So what would be the way of traveling? How would you love to travel? Would you, yeah, if, if the car would go uh, in an autonomous mode, would you like to, to sleep, lie down? Uh, uh, would you like to work, to talk? And given these scenarios, we started with a, a blank sheet of uh, paper and, and yeah, started to draw visionary concepts that are out of the box. Uh, nothing that you have seen so far. That was uh, also one of the tasks that we gave ourselves to do, do, to do something that you, you uh, haven't seen. You know? And this unconventional shapes and design is then moving borders you know, for us in our imagination, but also, of course, for people looking at it. So uh, this is more polarizing. This is not easy to the eye. That is something that you need to get used to. Yes. Yeah. But it definitely has advantages. Yeah. You, you can uh, create seat configurations where you look at each other. And this, an example, defines this shape, rather boxy shape of, of the thing. Yeah. So you've got a lot of hardware that you need to work into this if it's to be a level five autonomous car. How much of a challenge is it to integrate all that while still having a car that looks uh, attractive to people? Yeah, for us as designers, this is a tough challenge. Uh, the engineers are throwing sensor sets at us uh, and literally it, it uh, looks, looks like it's uh, Swiss cheese, yeah? a lot of holes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what we are aiming for is to create something that is iconic, yes. remember-able, and simple yeah? uh, so you combine functions uh, you have to move sensors all this is uh, part of our job uh, and and we move our way forward into this new technology fields and try to apply technology in a way that people are able to like it and i imagine this car obviously it's going to have to communicate with the outside world as well so i see you've got a a flashing light bar across here in the windscreen and is that going to be something that we'll see in cars that they'll sort of maybe show to people other road users that how they're functioning or how they're operating yeah as, as this is a car that uh, you, you also could sleep in yeah. and then all glazing is intransparent from outside yes you, yeah. you, there is no driver there is nobody that you have uh, uh, contact with when yes. you're standing at, at, at a sidewalk and the car is passing by and you want to see is, is that yeah. is he stopping or not okay, yeah. so this is something that the car in the future has to do communication to the outside world uh, and uh, breathing a certain friendliness but also showing I'm autonomous yes. I'm different yes yeah uh, so it should be, from my point of view, recognizable for uh, pedestrians and other uh, participants of traffic uh, to, to, to see, okay, I, I have to take care, this is an autonomous car, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, he is indicating he sees me, that's what we want. And that's going to be very important as these cars start to come on the road initially when you have a, a mixture of normal road users, let's call them, and these autonomous vehicles. And I think that's going to be an interesting to see how people interact with them and see them. But there's a lot to take in with this car. So maybe we can go around sure. and uh, maybe you can talk about some of the features and maybe why this car looks the way it looks. Yeah, uh, a, a lot of it uh, explains itself from uh, inside out. An example, this vertical windscreen 
and the very round shape is coming from the different seating setups that, that we have laid out. Uh, you maybe uh, remember the so-called Rumpla Tropfenwagen, so a teardrop yes, car from yeah. the 20s yeah. uh, of, of the last century. In the aerodynamics, uh, a wonder yeah, on uh, the technology was not that advanced, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, the general shape of uh, this uh, cabin reminds a little of, of this concept, but it allows uh, us yeah, to, to sit, yeah, if you would sit there, face forward, and I would sit, sit here, face so we, backwards, we can, face we can talk to each other, and the car goes, and uh, something that also, from my point of view, is sensational on this car is the outside view, yes. yeah, and the verticality uh, of, of the side. Once inside, you immediately uh, lay down and you, you, you look outside, you have a very large window area yes. yeah. and yeah, you're not, if, if you're driving autonomous, you don't have to, to yes. stare all the time on, on the traffic that you is... You can look at the side windows yeah, and uh, watch the world go by. And that's what you do when you, when you uh, travel uh, via train. Yeah, yes. you, you, you have a zip uh, and you look uh, out of the window into into the nice landscape. Yeah? So, and that's that that was the design feature here. Yeah, and as, as is, it, it is physically a very big car as well. This is uh, it is. Yeah, yeah. you you uh, if if you want to have a four seater layout, uh, you you need to have a, a very large footprint of the cabin. Yes. And of course, if you want to. To, to have a horizontal sleeping position yes. like in a first class jet yes. yeah and that's what we are offering here yeah. then uh, you also need to to have just I'll two meter I'll plus yes. yeah, uh, in room for for maneuver uh, and that is giving the the car its cool. footprint yeah. and you've got obviously being electric it means you can have the wheels stretched right out as well. And these are pretty big 22 inch wheels. They look really quite chunky on this. But around the back of the car then you see, I guess this is also part of the aerodynamics of the car and how I see how some of the air seems to be channeled through here. The, the back, it's almost like a cam tail at the back here. I explained this uh, teardrop uh, uh, shape, yeah? and. You can see how, how much uh, everything comes into a very small surface that remains. Yeah? And you, you have a lot of uh, aerodynamic features to optimize the drag uh, because the uh, battery content is still an issue. Yes, yeah? Yeah. Uh, as battery technology moves on, uh, we can, of course, then install larger ranges yes, yeah. and that's ahead of us. Yeah? Sure. That's a huge part of this car is the inside, so yeah. maybe we can let's take have, a look. Let's have a look. So you've got this vast door that opens and the step pops down. So this is gonna be super easy for anyone to get in and out of, but talk me through this interior layout and why it looks the way it looks. Yeah, I would like to start with the door concept. Why this door? Yeah? Uh, you, you just said it inside uh, uh, or the easy access or yeah, if, if you exit the car that need to be super comfortable. Yeah. And uh, you, you have kind of a rain shelter as well. So the interior is not getting wet uh, when yeah. the, the rain pours down. And you 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 can easily uh, step in, and you 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 have a very comfortable uh, seating position. As you have no steering wheel, you you tend then to sit down like on a chair. Yes. Yeah. That that also means you have to have a different door concept. Yeah. You know, uh, if if you slip yourself behind the steering wheel, that's a different movement. Okay. You know? Yeah. Here you are more like entering a room and sit down. You know? So. And these are all one piece seats as well. So you've it's, it's not like a car seat that you're getting into. This is much more like a lounge. Yeah. Uh, we we do see that 
uh, the interior on autonomous vehicles is getting more and more importance. And uh, if, if you imagine that you don't have to drive anymore, you don't need to have instruments, you have no steering wheels, you have no pedals. So all this working gear, mm. so to speak, is disappearing. And you, you have walls and furniture. Yeah? So furniture, yes. that's what you see here. Yeah. And that gives the, the product a totally different character and is much more comfortable uh, and easier to the eye. You know? And that's what we are aiming at here. Uh, as you should feel at home instantly. And to get a closer look inside, I'm joined by Nikolai RD, who's the head of innovation for the Volkswagen Group. Nikolai, this is a really spectacular and unusual cabin. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about why the Gen Travel is shaped this way. Yeah, the Gen Travel is uh, basically made as a time machine. So to regain uh, on, uh, the time for during travel for you, so it's uh, completely, um, completely putting all the pain points of travel away. When you imagine, for instance, making a short uh, distance flight, driving to the airport, dropping your luggage, yes, squeezing into the line, yes. squeezing into your seat. Deboarding yeah. the plane, then waiting for your luggage, walking long distances on the airport, then having another hour to your final destination. Yeah. So this car just picks you up at the door where you would like to take off and then to just reach uh, the fi final destination door to door. So it's a proper door to door service. And I understand you, you can obviously configure the cabin according to how yes, you would like to have uh, it. Yes, so. it's a modular concept. Yes. So, um, especially due to the shape of the cabin, you can uh, also sit vis-a-vis -vis with uh, four persons, uh, up to four persons in the car. And uh, the, the idea behind is that you just order the car uh, by your app yes. in the desired uh, setup as you like. Yes. And the robot then configures the car uh, of the servers and then the car comes uh, up to your demand. So at the moment, this sort of mode is for two people and well, you're, you're sitting quite upright. You're ready to maybe do a little bit of work. You've got the table here, but, but all of this can change, right? So this is all, you can use these controls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is a, a, a remote control because uh, if you sit in, in, in such a car, you are, don't have access to any knobs there or touch screens. Yes. So you just uh, either take this remote control, which is really nice to, to have in, in yes. your hand, yeah. or you take uh, the, the uh, augmented reality glasses okay. where you can also uh, con control or, or see everything mm -hmm. in yes. a 3D manner. And then we have a personal assistant there. This is our Luna. Luna, okay. And Luna is uh, like, uh, you know it uh, from uh, from the Amazon uh, system. Uh, Alexa or uh, Siri like or... This, yeah, okay. yeah, this yeah, is your yeah. personal assistant. And uh, the Luna has also a, a second function. So if you make a trip from A to B, mm. then it starts on the left-hand side. Ah, uh, and it then along. it uh, goes along the uh, trip That's and you always uh, know roughly how long you still... So you have a progress uh, as yeah. you go along. But obviously, you, you, this is all very changeable. So you can sit up and have a meal or work on your laptop, or you can just yeah, have this all exactly. go so away. Exactly. This is and movable, as, uh, same uh, with the seats. Uh, yes. They can be in a sit normally com comfortable, relaxed position, or in a more upright position, or even completely flat um, uh, for, for sleeping. So these, are, these are not like normal car seats at all. Yeah, yeah, these yeah, are yeah. Much, I mean, these are like a a business class seat on an, air, on an aircraft. Yeah, yeah, and even more because uh, it has uh, um, um, uh, a setup with only one uh, one cover. Yes, yeah. And it, exactly. uh, you don't see any slits or something like yes, this. Yeah. So this so is also a big run, innovation. You can have this reclined even yeah. more. And yeah, OK. And another big thing about this is the amount of glass we see inside here. Yeah. So this is you know, you're sitting right inside your cocoons and you can see everything. Yeah. But 
can people see in or you know can you alter this because obviously maybe some people want to get some sleep so how do you do that yeah just uh, uh, press the knob on your remote control and the whole glass gets dark okay so, you so can i can show you so it gets opaque okay just uh, by liquid crystals and yeah. uh, then you have a very nice um, um, night it's uh, almost like a very nice ambience, ambience and relaxing yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. and especially also the the, the 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 ambient light in the car itself yes. is uh, designed to support uh, your mood okay so uh, your your melaton level uh, will be influenced by the color of the light yeah. so if you would like to get asleep then uh, then it, it gets very warm colors yes and to to get you wake up in a better way it, uh, the ch ch color changes towards more cold uh, colors so the idea is you can have your windows go dark you can put the seat down fully flat have a sleep but what happens during the night can this car just keep driving does it need to stop what what happens with the car well, it, uh, it keeps go, uh, driving uh, for quite a distance. Uh, so uh, a car in, in, in that dimension uh, is capable of a battery of uh, more than 100 kilowatt hours. Okay. And this means uh, you can uh, travel uh, five, 600 uh, miles at least. And, yes. and yeah. as the battery technology is still uh, having a steep gradient of, uh, of innovation in terms of energy content and also charging power, uh, it will even increase and then uh, a thousand kilometers would also not be uh, such a challenge. And this car could theoretically and, and stop can, and charge. It can, of course, itself, of yeah. course, it can also stop at a charging station and and uh, with a um, we will have in future 300 kilowatts charging power. Okay. Right. And uh, this means uh, within uh, a quarter of an hour the vehicle will be charged. And it could, in theory, do that while you sleep yeah, and sure. do it without without you as yeah. a passenger having to do it. That's true yeah. because uh, there are also will be also charging robots outside which uh, plug in the, uh, the cable to your car. Probably the most fascinating thing about this for me is that this isn't just a concept car. This isn't just a show car. This is a working prototype. Yeah, this is a working horse for our innovation department where we all test this kind of uh, interior concepts but also we use it to, to drive out there in, in our proving ground uh, to also learn which uh, kind of uh, chassis technology which we need if you are uh, sleeping yeah. so you need a different kind of vertical dynamics and com comfort uh, and, and, and which kind of uh, lateral acceleration you, you would um, be able to cope with uh, during sleeping or doing um, uh, playing games or whatever and also um, developing the right means uh, against motion sickness is also very important okay, yes, yes. but we also uh, mainly use the light sources uh, to assist um, uh, your body not to get um, uh, affected by motion sickness. So how, how have you looked into it? This is kinetosis that we talked about, yeah. which is travel sickness. So what, how do you use the light to prevent travel sickness? Yeah, normally if you look uh, to a device or you read a book, uh, then your eyes, uh, the, the eye signal does not match uh, the movement uh, which your body experiences. And this mismatch uh, causes uh, this kinetose, at, uh, especially if, if the acceleration uh, is, is at a high level. And you can uh, a little bit diminish uh, this effect if your lights uh, move in the same way like your ambient does. Okay, because yes, normally yes. if you look just outside you see the trees uh, yeah, passing, the, the shadows lights, passing. Yes, yeah. And this will be done by the ambient lights and, okay. and so you um, are at a lower risk of kinetosis. Thank you very much. This is a fascinating insight into this gen travel. Hopefully we'll be able to see this in the not too distant future.